Hello, I'm Russell Brand. This isn't the truth. This is an exclusive reading from my new book, Revolution, What I've Done Using My Brain and Typing. In this extract, I talk to Matt Stoller, who some of you, not many of you, will remember from Brand X, a TV programme I've done in America. You probably saw that clip where I was talking to the Westbury Baptist Church. Maybe you saw that bit. Well, there's a bloke on it called Matt Stoller. He's double clever, and he's Nick Stoller, the film director's brother. He's well clever. He works in Congress. I spoke to him and asked him for some revolutionary ideas. A lot of the things in this book are other people's revolutionary ideas, packaged cleverly and humorously by me or us, a comedian, dialogues with them. This, my mate, this is what my mate Matt Stoller said when I go, come up with some ideas that would change the world. But he, he came up with one idea about banning private security. His second idea is what I'm going to read to you now. And it's fascinating. <clears throat> I was curious to see what else Matt had up the sleeve of his Harvard blazer. Yes, he did go to Harvard, the bloody hypocrite. His next idea to create a different world was equally cunning and revolutionary. Get rid of all titles. This is Matt's voice now. Mr. President, Ambassador, Admiral, Senator, the Honourable, Your Honour, Captain, Doctor. These are all titles that capitalism relies on to justify treating some people better than others. Matt is an American, so when it comes to deferring to the entitled, let's face it, he's an amateur compared to the British. Look at me, simpering to Professor Slingland, someone that I spoke to earlier in the book, whenever he's mentioned. I can't wait to prostrate myself before his scepter of diplomas. I'm a right little lick spittle sneak down the doctors and all. Yes, doctor. No, doctor. Please don't let me die, doctor. Charge what you must, doctor. Stick your finger where you fancy, doctor. Plus, in Britain, we've got a royal family. What's Matt going to say about that? One of the most remarkable things you learn when you work in a position of political influence is just how much titles separate the wealthy and the politicians from citizens. Ordinary people will use a title before addressing someone and that immediately makes that ordinary person a supplicant and the titled one a person of influence or if both have titles then there's upper class solidarity. Rank, hierarchy, these are designed to create a structure whereby power is shaped in the very act of greeting someone. Oh, Oh, you can't even say hello. I'm getting angry again. Matt's right. Titles are part of the invisible architecture of our social structure. I'm never using one again. If I ever see Professor Slingland in the street, I shall alert him by hollering, Oi, fuckface, then throw a hazelnut at him. Which is a reference to a funny joke earlier in the book that you won't get because you've not read the book yet, unless you have, in which case, good back reference, wouldn't you say? What does Matt propose? One of the things you can do to negate this power is to be firm but respectful and address anyone and everyone by their last name. Mr, Ms or Mrs is all the title you should ever need. This allows you to treat everyone as your equal and it shows everyone that they should treat you as their equal. Right, fair enough. I went in a bit hard there on old Teddy Slingerland, or just Mr. Slingerland, according to Matt's polite revolution. His suggestion of equal titles for us all is provocative, particularly to those of us who live in monarchies. I mean, in England, we have a queen, for fuck's sake. A queen! We have to call her things like, Your Majesty. Your Majesty! Like she's all majestic, like an eagle or a mountain. She's just a person, a little old lady in a shiny hat that we paid for. Or Your Highness. What the fuck? is that? Well, she's high up above us at the top of a class pyramid on a shelf of money with her own face on it. We should be calling her Mrs. Windsor. In fact, that's not even her real name. They changed it in the war to distract us from the inconvenient fact that they were as German as the enemy that teenage boys were being encouraged, conscripted actually, to die fighting. Her actual name is Mrs. Saxa Coburg Goethe. Mrs. Saxa Coburg Goethe? No wonder they fucking changed it. It's the most German thing I've ever heard. She might as well have been called Mrs. Bratverse Kraut Nazi. Titles have got to go. I'm not calling her your highness or your majesty just so we can pretend there isn't and hasn't always been an international cabal of rich landowners flitting merrily across the globe, getting us all to kill each other a couple of times a decade. From now on, she's Frau Saxa Coburg Goethe. Come on, Frau Saxa Coburg Goethe. It's time for you to have breakfast with her Saxa Coburg Goethe. And you can make it yourselves. And by the way, we're nicking this fucking great castle you've been dossing in and giving it to a hundred poor families. Actually, you can stay there if you want. They'll need a cleaner. You'll have to watch your lip, though, here, Saxa Coburg Goethe. Some of them ain't white. We British have much to gain from Matt's titleless utopia. He continues, It's a small thing, seemingly inconsequential, but it's not. No, not to the Saxa Coburg Goethe's. They're well fucked. 
If this became common, you'd shortly see sputtering rage from the powerful and increased agitation from the erstwhile meek. People need to mark their dominance. That is the essence of highly unequal capitalism. If they can't do so, if they aren't allowed to be dominant, to be shown as being dominant, then the system cannot long be sustained. Matt's ideas are like the schemes of a cackling supervillain from a Bond movie. At first they seem innocuous, but then they elegantly unravel the fabric of society. He suggests we start this now. This is something that anyone and everyone can act on. A tiny act of rebellion that takes no money, influence or social status. You just need courage. And every human has that.